Welcome to the third Blackboard discussion on demand and supply, starting with the demand curve. This is the third on demand. Here's our first scenario. Uh, the demand as a table of prices and quantity demanded. We turned that into a demand curve last time, or line like this, where we have the benefit of each successive unit kind of being represented underneath here. And this is one person's demand curve. So we get this idea of benefit under the demand curve. That's going to be important when we talk about why markets are so fascinating, why people believe in equilibrium points, and why you put a demand and supply together, and why it's still such a powerful argument. You've got to understand that benefit is underneath the demand curve. Okay, I just want to emphasize that because later on it becomes so important. But now we move on and we got to remember that this demand curve is one moment in time, one particular picture of demand with everything else being unchanged. Ceteris paribus, nothing else is changing. This is one picture, just the price changes and it tells us the quantity demanded changing. We've got to move on from there because we can manipulate our demand curve in a particular way. It looks something like this. What we get is a series of things that will change, and when they change, we have to draw a new demand curve. For example, here's our demand for hot dogs. Looks something like this. This demand for hot dogs isn't just one person anymore. We've added up all these different demand curves here. We can put Joe's demand curve, uh, Joaquin's demand curve here, Sarah's demand curve here, Kendra's demand curve here, uh, Joey's demand curve here, and uh, Amanda's demand curve there. And you add up at various prices, and you end up with a market demand curve, which is this thing here, which is what we're going to work with from now on. This is one moment in time, the market demand curve, for hot dogs, price per hot dog, quantity of hot dogs demanded per day down here. This is the way it looks. But sometimes things change. That's what all of these lists are. You probably have to memorize them and you'll have to shift demand curves, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to go through this pretty quick because, you know, it's good for market analysis, but it's the equilibrium that I'm going to emphasize here. But when demand changes, the equilibrium changes. Let's go forward. Taste, very simple. It's preferences. It's um, popularity, various words you can use for taste. What happens for hot dogs? Let's say all of a sudden, it turns out if you eat a lot of hot dogs, you grow hair on your head if you're bald. Well, if that were the case, at $5, instead of this amount of hot dogs, we'll say 100. Remember, this is market demand. All of a sudden, at $5, uh, you know what? People are willing to buy 200 hot dogs over here. So what do you get? $5 it used to be 100, now it's 200. You get a new dot there, don't you? And as a matter of fact, for each one of these prices over here, four, three, two, one, you get more demand. So the demand is going to look like this now. I'm going to draw a new demand curve. We'll draw a line and we'll call it demand two. What's happened? More demand. Demand is shifted to the right. We can note that down right here. Let's change our color because this is going to be an important concept, I think. We put over here more demand. Remember I've said demand now, not quantity demand. When you say more demand, that means you're going to shift and change. And actually what you're doing is drawing a new demand curve. Things have changed. The old demand curve situation isn't the same anymore. More demand means you shift things to the right. So the first thing, if you demand or prefer hot dogs more, you shift it to the right. That's tastes. What happens if something else changes? For example, Turns out if you eat a lot of hot dogs, it gives you a heart attack, something like that, something negative, something worse, it becomes less popular. What does that mean? That means at every price, $5, we no longer demand the 100 hot dogs, do we? We demand fewer or less hot dogs, so we put a dot there. As a matter of fact, at every price, we're going to demand fewer hot dogs. And what's going to happen to this kind of wobbly, but there it is, demand curve? It's going to shift to the left. So less equals left. You notice I'm not saying up or down because if you say up or down, it's going to get you in problems later. Less equals left, more equals right. So if all of a sudden hot dogs give you a bad heart, you eat fewer of them and demand shifts to the left. Less hot dogs. Now that's taking care of this taste. This is the easy one. More right, less left. 
we got this whole list to work through. This is just a matter of studying. I'm sure whatever textbook you're using will list these same things. You just got to study it. More to the right, less to the left. Figure out tastes first because that's the easiest one and it gets you comfortable and you're shifting this demand curve. Things have changed. Preferences have changed. Let's go through these very quickly now. Income. Well, a normal good is something that says if your income goes up, you have more money, you will buy more of the good. If your income goes down, you have less money, you'll buy less of the good. Let's say that's steak. An inferior good is something like, oh, hamburger, something you don't necessarily like, but if you have a ton of money, you're not going to buy as much hamburger. So more income, you actually shift it to the left, and less income, if you're really poor, you buy more hamburger, so you shift it to the right. Income's a tricky thing because it's a normal and inferior good. But nonetheless, you're shifting these curves back and forth when something changes, in this case, income. Price of related goods. What happens if all of a sudden hamburgers were $40 a hamburger? Everybody would stop buying hamburgers, and if the price of hot dogs was the same, they'd buy more hot dogs. So this is a substitute good, and if the price of hamburgers goes up, you don't buy hamburgers anymore, you buy hot dogs, and the demand for hot dogs shifts to the right. Now, a complement good is something that goes with hot dogs like mustard. So if something like the price of hot dogs goes down, you buy more mustard and the demand for mustard would shift to the right. Um, you know, these things get complicated. Really, you've got to find a good place to practice this, a good worksheet, and just shift and practice and practice these things. Here's the whole list. This is pretty much it. It's not everything in the world. It's just this. Something changes, your demand curve shifts to the right or to the left. Consumer expectations. Oh, this is a fun one. Tricky, though. If I expect hot dogs tomorrow to be $400 a hot dog, what am I going to do today? You got it. I'm going to buy a lot of hot dogs because they're cheap. They're only $5 today, for example, maybe. So my demand shifts to the right if I expect hot dog prices to go up in the future. How about my demand for hot dogs today if I expect hot dog prices to go down in the future? I'm going to say, wait a minute. I'll wait buy my hot dogs tomorrow. So my demand for hot dogs today shifts to the left, less. Expectations, expectations of future prices. And an easy one, number of buyers. More people who buy hot dogs, more people at the baseball game. Demand for hot dogs shifts to the right. Fewer people at the baseball game. Demand shifts to left. You know, you guys, you just have to practice these things. Shifting demand curves changes things in the equilibrium. We'll talk about that later. But what I really want to focus on is equilibrium point and what's important there. And that's why I keep coming back to this thing here where demand means benefit under the demand curve. And specifically for the first one, the marginal benefit under the demand curve, the marginal benefit of the second one, the marginal benefit of the third one. That's these columns representation. All right, man. I'll see you next time. We'll talk about supply, and then we'll put them together later on. Uh, catch you around for supply one next time.